Hey everybody, welcome to a Brute Pop Reaction with me, BP1 and BP2. And Here we we've are. got a highly anticipated video for us and for all you, which is the American yeah. Revolution Oversimplified Part 1. Now, yeah, lots that's of people how we like it. Yeah, Oversimplified. <laughs> uh, there's lots of people, we, you know, we started to do sort of like more reactions to do with America, to understand its history rather than just what I see on the telly. Um, and a lot about the culture and everything else. So it's it's right that we do this one. We know we're not stupid. We're aware that other reactors have done this one as well. Um, okay. But we are, you know, in, genuinely interested in everything to do with America. Revolution, civil wars, everything. So we're going to start yeah. with the revolution. Okay. Um, and hopefully this will make us understand it. Because it's, I think it's probably written for you and me. I hope so, because I mean... <laughs> Most of my knowledge of America came from the A team, so you know, let's see exactly. how this does. Exactly, a so. mash. <laughs> let's crack on. All right, let's get on with it. Holy smokes. Christopher Columbus, that is no way to address the king and queen of Spain. What is wrong with you? Okay, okay, so you know how we're looking for a new trade route to India, right? Right. And the earth is round, right? Right. So I'm thinking we can just sail the other way around the planet, right? Yeah. So I set sail, right? Mm -hmm. And I reach India, right? Right. Wrong. 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 I did not reach India. I did not. All right, no. all right, get to the point. Did you know? There's a whole nother freaking continent out there. Okay, and you think I should care about this? Why? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I forget to mention there's gold everywhere? Uh, uh, gold. Uh, this is definitely for us. Columbus landed yeah. in Central America in October 1492, and he had the time of his life. And by that I mean he went on a huge theft and murder spree. He stole gold, oh. jewelry, people, and a hammock. And then he returned to show off and all of his hammock. riches, including a few previously undiscovered hammock. items, such as tobacco, the pineapple, turkeys, and a hammock. Now I know what you're thinking, but oversimplified, Columbus didn't discover America, the Vikings did. And you'd be partially right. In the 11th century, Leif Erikson was the first European to land in America. But hey, if you love Vikings so much, then why don't you check out today's sponsor? Vikings War of Clans oh, okay. is a mobile game that was inspired by the <laughs> famous strategy smooth, and RPG games of the 90s like fair. Age of Empires that smooth, and gets the special up. bonus of 200 gold coins and a protective oh, shield. Man, Time of up. his life, Hammock. And suddenly the race was on to explore and conquer the new world. After a couple centuries of warring with the natives and each other, the European powers had claimed quite a lot of land, including this area, which both the English and the French claimed as theirs. One day the French said, I'm going to build some forts along here. And the English were like, could you not? And the French said, sorry, but no, I could not not. And they went ahead and built their forts, which pissed off the English. So they sent an up and coming British lieutenant colonel by the name of George Washington with a combined force of British troops and Native Americans. After a short battle, the French commander said, all right, all right, we surrender. Okay, boys, pack it up. They're surrendering. Oh, sorry, was I not meant to split his head open with a tomahawk? Ah, don't worry, it's not like this will start a seven-year-long major global conflict. And what happened next was a seven-year-long major global conflict, oh, which Great no. Britain won. At the peace negotiations, Spain gave up Florida, while France gave up all of its territories in North America. But Britain's victory wow. came at a cost, a 60 million pound cost. They were now broke, in a lot of debt, and had to come up with some way to repay it. So they went to the They're colonies and said, them. Okay, listen up. So a huge part of the war was spent protecting you from the French, yeah. and now we have no money because of it. So... I'm not sure what you're saying here. Okay, so we spent a lot of money protecting you from the French, right? Right. And now we're broke. That certainly is a pickle. Listen to me. We spent all of our money protecting you, and now we need money. Can you please pay us back some money? No. Okay. No. Okay. okay, we're just going to go ahead and tax you. In 1764, Britain introduced the Sugar Act, forcing the colonists yep. to import sugar and molasses exclusively from the British and to pay duties wow. on them. Then a year later, they introduced the extremely controversial Stamp Act, and it worked a little something like this. Hello, shopkeep. Hello, Mr. Bungleberry. Here's the deed for your new shack. Stamp. That'll be three pence, please. Wait, what was that? It's the new tax. I get a stamp on any paper or documentation I make, and you have to pay for it. Would you like to see this pamphlet that explains everything? Yes, please. Okay. Stamp. Two pence, please. <laughs> this is awful. You know what? Just give me a deck of cards so it's I can go gamble like today. Okay. Okay, right. We'll stop it because it's quite... I'm glad that it's this sort of video because it, it, it yeah. is over it's simplified even for my... I'm fun. It is fun. fun and fun. Yeah, guys so put a lot of effort into it, to be he fair. He has, yeah, and you're learning. Well, so it's, to, just to give him a call out, so it's a YouTube channel called Oversimplified. It has 6.92 million subscribers. Um, so, fantastic, you know, the, the yeah. fact that there's that these types of videos are like this to really bring that history. We all learn it from, you know, yeah. schools and stuff like Boring. that. This Boring. This is so good, isn't it, to understand yeah. a bit. Even for myself, with a bit of British history here around, know. you know what we did and uh, uh, up until this point. 
Yeah. Still doing it now, mate. Still broke. Still broke, yeah. Still taxing everybody for everything. Yeah, Aren't we just? Um, but yeah, no, it's very yeah. interesting. And like I said, it's very engaging. He's put some, uh, you know, some humour in it as well to keep you engaged of all ages. I mean, you, you, you know, anybody, you know, from all ages could learn from this. And um, yeah, and then you retain it as well because it's done in such a way that it, 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 it you know, it connects. So I've learned mm. already. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There didn't realise, didn't realise so far. So great, especially like Chris of Columbus, straight away out of the box, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, went to India, but I didn't. I got it. <laughs> something else got in the way. I mean, very black adderish, isn't it? You know, it is, very it cool. Is. Okay, let's keep going. No. <laughs> Don't do it. Stamp. <laughs> Obviously, the colonists were like, hey, my dudes, this new tax legislation right here, this is BS. Until now, they had enjoyed relative freedom to rule themselves, and now suddenly Britain was asserting its control. They were especially unhappy because they didn't have any representatives in the parliament that was levying taxes on them. So they protested. Right. Orators gave fiery speeches. British goods were boycotted, and anyone loyal to the British found fight. themselves increasingly harassed. The whole thing actually began to take quite a toll on British business, and after just a couple years, the British were forced to repeal the Stamp Act. But we still desperately well, need money. What before. should we do? We could try taxing the colonies. Yeah. Great idea. Wait, didn't we literally just try that and it failed miserably? Man, look at me. I look fabulous. <laughs> Have you ever seen such a handsome boy? No sorry, Georgie. No way. You're the handsomest, smartest, most popular king that ever lived, and everybody likes you. You're doing such a good job. Uh, Your Majesty? Oh, <laughs> you're still here. Oh, Get the hell out. So in 1766, the British made a declaration saying, we can do what we want because we're in charge and you can all go suck it. Then they levied a whole bunch of new taxes on the Americans via import duties. Glass? There's a tax for that. Lead? There's a tax for that. Paper? Tea? Oil? There's a tax for that. And once yeah. again, the Americans We've boycotted British now. goods, British business felt yeah. the pinch, and the British had to back down. All right, this is ridiculous. Uh, They're my colonies, and I have to be able to assert my control. Repeal all the new taxes except for the one on T. Also send 1,000 troops to Boston to take control. Oh, and make the colonists pay for them. And as British troops uh, arrived, uh, the tension in Boston was palpable. You could cut it with a knife, okay. and it was all about to come to a head. On March 5th, a band of local patriots began heckling a British guard at the Customs House. More and more Americans joined in the heckling, while more British troops turned up in support of their comrade. Snowballs were thrown at the British. The snowballs turned to rocks, the rocks to oyster shells. The soldiers outnumbered. Panicked. One thing leads to another, and you can see where this is going. Oh, yeah. Five civilians Not were good. killed. The Patriot press Why? throughout the colonies declared the Boston Massacre an unwarranted crime committed against the people of Boston by the cruel British, oh, and the wow. anger continued to grow. That. A British revenue schooner that ran aground in Rhode Island was burned by the locals. When it came to light that the governor of Massachusetts supported the suppression of the colonists, his house was burned by the locals. And next, the colonists oh. would set their sights on the remaining tax on tea. On December 16th, 1773, a band of patriots known as the Sons of Liberty disguised themselves as Native Americans, marched down to Boston Harbor, boarded a British merchant ship loaded with tea, and in front of thousands of spectators, threw nearly 10,000 pounds worth of tea overboard. The Ooh. British were disgusted, and they punished Massachusetts oh, yes. with a vengeance. The they dissolved the its general assembly, revoked their charter, and sent 3,000 more troops to occupy the city, meaning Boston Ooh. and Massachusetts were now essentially under the direct rule of Great Britain. And oh boy, were the people right. pissed. The other colonies oh, saw yeah. what was happening and worried they might be next. So they called a brain trust to decide what to do. 56 delegates from 12 colonies gathered and met in Philadelphia at the First Continental right. Congress. And the roll call read like a who's who of America's finest thinkers. I'm talking lawyers extraordinaire Johnny A and Johnny J, experienced military commander George Washington, George Washington. businessman and future alcoholic beverage Samuel Adams, fiery orator Patty H. Guy who married a rich lady, Big J Dickinson. And while they weren't present at the first Congress, soon names like James Madison, uh, Benjamin Franklin, brilliant. Thomas Jefferson, and much later Alexander Hamilton would all serve time in the Continental Congress. Hey, the question now though, was what to do yeah, about the Thomas British. Jefferson. After much bitter debate and disagreement, they eventually agreed on an amazing solution. They would simply ask the British to stop. Can you stop? No, brilliant. it didn't work. Okay, <laughs> then tell the local militias to start arming and be ready at a minute's notice. Oh, wow. And across the colonies, these Minutemen stood ready for the beginning of the American... Well, I am... I'm, re I'm enjoying this. I'm, yeah. I'm, le I'm, I'm Is... genuinely learning. Um, mm -hmm. And I like the way he's doing it. And like you say, it's the humour side of yeah. it. Because obviously, it didn't happen quite like he's saying it. But <laughs> the, f the way he's doing it... Yeah, uh, you know, trying to get the high level points across, um, for sure. So yeah, it's it's good. I'm starting to understand. So now, obviously, beginning, you know, and across the colonies, stood ready for the beginning of the American Revolutionary War. So yes. this is the bit where we're getting into it now. 
So you can so. see, you know, why they were a bit ticked off at uh, Britain and uh, us for just dicking them around, really. But um, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah well, again, you know, just getting involved in everything, aren't we? We got to be involved in it all. There yes, you go. it is one of those things, isn't it, about Britain? We do seem to get our, we do seem to poke our proverbial nose in what, everywhere and everything. Yeah, in. but yeah. Trouble is, it's difficult, isn't it, with history? Because you can only, you know, we're of our own certain time, and we can only, um, you know, comment on on the now. It's difficult with history, isn't it? It's yep. some of it's a bit cringeworthy. You think, well, why would you do that? What well, you know, and it's we, but it is history, and that's what it and, is at the end of the day. It is history of a certain uh, period of time. So uh, exactly, and and you know, history as is. Has evolved, and that's why we're all where we are now. You know, mm. turn up yeah, events, with my stupid know. trucker hat on that you say. Yeah, indeed. Hey, nothing wrong with a trucker hat, is there? Truckers? He's a right trucker. Anyway, let's crack on. Revolutionary War. Now, having your colonies in open rebellion is one thing. Once they start right. arming themselves, that's when it really hits the fan. So, British oh, General yeah. Thomas Gage ordered 700 troops from Boston out into the rebel controlled Massachusetts countryside to destroy stores of arms and ammunition held by the rebels in Concord. The British set out in the middle of the night. Patriots, including Paul Revere, rode ahead to warn that the British were coming, giving the rebels time to prepare. The two sides gotcha. met in Lexington as the sun began to rise. They faced off against each other, and in yep. the confusion, somebody shot first. The shot Ow. heard around the world marked the beginning of the American War of Independence. The rebels were outnumbered and had to fall back to Concord as the British split up to search for rebel supplies. However, more and more Patriot rebels kept showing up. And this time it was the British who were outnumbered as more fighting kicked off in Concord. The most professional army in the world was forced to flee back to Boston at the hands of local, poorly trained militiamen. And all along the British were back to Boston, Patriot rebels continued to gather yeah. and open fire on the retreating British. When the British reached Boston, the rebel militias surrounded them. Boston and the British were now under siege as small land and naval skirmishes continued around the city and the British would suffer another embarrassing blow, this time in upstate New York. Colonel Benedict Arnold concocted a plan to take the British stronghold Fort Ticonderoga, which held a large amount of guns and ammunition. He set off towards ah. the fort alone, hoping to recruit men along the way, when he came across the Green Mountain Boys, led by Ethan Allen, who as it turned out, had the exact same plan he did. So they decided to work together, but I'm in charge. No, 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 I'm in charge. This went on for some time, until the Green Mountain Boys threatened to go home, and Arnold had to concede. The group raided the fort at night while the Redcoats were asleep, and they caught them completely by surprise, taking the fort and all of its munitions with almost no resistance. Wow, great job, Ethan. Wow. Very impressive. By the way, what happened to that other guy we sent to take the fort? Who? Benedict Arnold. Never heard of him. <laughs> He's at the back. Ouch. <laughs> oh, dear me. What the f Nobody knew what was going on. The colonies were in open rebellion, and for now, they even seemed to be winning. So King George fired General Gage, replaced him with General William Howe, and ordered the rebellion to be put down immediately. Okay, the British are definitely going to retaliate for all of this, so we should probably put together a proper army. First, we need to pick a commander-in-chief, and I think we can all agree that that job should go to the man, the myth, the legend, George Washington. My friends, I am humbled and honored that you would consider me for such an important role. I did not expect for this All great... right, you've been showing up in a military uniform every day for the last 10 months. We all know you wanted this, so cut the crap, George. Dude. Oh, funny. Uncool. So Washington began his journey up to Boston to take command of the newly established Continental Army, just as the British made their first major attempt to break the siege. They made plans to take the high ground on Bunker Hill, but spies warned the Continentals of the British plans, so they fortified Bunker Hill and set up defensive positions on nearby Breed's Hill. The day of the battle came, and as the British advanced, a barrage of Continental gunfire was opened up on them. Twice they tried to wow. climb the hill, twice they were pushed okay. back. The battle lasted three hours until the Continentals finally ran out of ammunition and had to retreat, allowing the British three to take hours. the hill. While technically oh, wow. a British victory, they suffered nearly 1,000 casualties to the Continentals' 400. The colonists showed the British that this wasn't just a rebellion, it was war, and they were ready for it. But one thing they weren't sure about was why they were fighting. While some radicals were starting to throw around the I-word, most hoped to eventually repair their relationship with Great Britain. So they sent a letter to King George saying, Hey man, looks like things aren't going your way. Remove the taxes and let's be friends. I'm gonna kick your ass. Send that to the colonies. Your majesty, your handwriting is terrible. Are you sure? Just do it. What does it say? He's gonna lick my... 
Oh, Gross. no. <laughs> so for the remainder of the year, small engagements oh, continued to occur around the colonies. Very the British funny. burned down the towns of Falmouth, Massachusetts, and Norfolk, Virginia as revenge for earlier anti-British incidents. These actions played right into the hands of patriot propaganda. Overseas, the British were seen as brutes, and the French and Spanish would soon begin sending supplies to the rebel cause. During this time, there was also minor that fighting was... going on between patriot and loyalist mm. militias in the southern colonies. Benedict Arnold was still on a mission to win some personal glory for himself, so he headed up an attempt to invade Canada in a two-pronged attack. The Continentals managed to capture some British forts and the city of Montreal, but a harsh snowstorm with some smallpox on the side saw them defeated and pushed back at <laughs> Quebec City, and they were forced the to retreat smallpox. all the way to Fort Ticonderoga. Speaking of... Okay, so remember, there's a lot going, on. Lot going, a lot on. going yeah. on, and this is part yeah. one of part of two parts. So okay. It, it, you know, but to really give you the, the, the best information on this, so he's not missing anything out, you know, I like the fact that he's putting all the dates in, um, you know, the back and forth, you know. So they have studied history yeah. here, for sure. Pictures of butts. Um, yeah, pictures of butts. Hopefully it wasn't, yep. you know, yours. Um, <laughs> so, wrinkled. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's good um, in the but aspect it just shows doing it. History hasn't changed, has it? I mean, you, you know, they're saying the, the French and the Spanish were sending arms and stuff over to support what's going on today. You know, it's exactly the same, isn't it? You know. Well, it's sad. We isn't don't it? learn. We do not learn, mate. You know, when your date starts with seventeen, and this is going on, and your date yeah. starts with twenty twenty two, and the it's same crap still, still going on, it's not um, no, nah, it's not good. But that's no. the way of the world, unfortunately. But all right, let's crack on. But yeah. He loves it. He loves the butt, doesn't he? <laughs> Which, crack. Remember all those guns and ammunition? Well, this guy's got a plan for what to do with them. He uses oxen to drag 120,000 pounds of artillery for two months through the harsh winter, 300 miles all the way to Whoa. Washington and his Continental Army surrounding Boston. Boom. Washington's got himself some big guns. <laughs> Which is fortunate, because up until now his army had been suffering through the cold winter, not knowing when the siege would end. Now, they could make a move. Washington wanted to launch a full assault on the city, but his junior officers felt the British were too fortified, and to his credit, Washington was great at hearing and taking on board the ideas of others. Instead, the Continentals worked through the night setting the guns up on Dorchester Heights overlooking the city. And when dawn broke and the British saw the guns, they knew they were toast. Their positions were completely Toasted. exposed. It was checkmate. They had I mean, no yeah. choice but to abandon the city. 120 ships carried 9,000 redcoats and 2,000 loyalists away to an unknown fate. And Washington had his first victory of the war. Washington then moved his army to New York, knowing that when the British returned, they would probably land there. In the meantime, a friendly looking old man by the name of Thomas Paine had written and published a pamphlet <laughs> called Common Sense, in which he advocated for total independence <laughs> from Great yes. Britain. It spread across <laughs> the colonies like wildfire, and to this day remains the best-selling title in America. It was read aloud in taverns wow. and meeting halls, and brought the idea of independence into the mainstream. Congress began to okay. seriously consider the idea. Thomas Jefferson was selected to write up an official declaration of independence, and he went hard, writing that all men are created equal, with certain inalienable rights, including life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Of course, Jefferson had over 100 slaves, but we don't have to talk about that. On the 2nd of July, oh, Congress voted minute. unanimously in favor of independence, and John yeah. Adams declared that the 2nd of July would go down as the most remembered day in American history. Then a couple days later, independence actually came into effect. The United States of America was born. There was no turning back now. The Americans tore down right. a statue of King George in New York and melted him down into 42,000 musket bowls. To the British, wow. it was treason. And if the king wow. had his way, Washington and all of Congress would be hung. Speaking of the British, guess who's back? The king sent an intimidating force of 130 warships and 25,000 men to New York. Washington knew that taking on the most powerful men. military in the world wouldn't be easy. The British set up camp on Staten Island as the Americans dug into defensive positions around Brooklyn Heights, waiting for an attack okay. to come. But the British just waited, wearing down their opponent's nerve while building their own strength. At one point, they launched a big scary artillery barrage and then said, you know, if I was you right now, I'd probably sue for peace. But Washington told them to shove it. The Americans kept holding out for what was coming, oh, and when they finally hit, they hit hard. 15,000 British troops approached the American position, and the two sides fired on each other in massive rows. But what the Americans didn't realize was they were Crazy. only fighting a decoy. The main British force was going around going to flank the, the Americans from behind, and the when they arrived, they inflicted heavy casualties. The Americans panicked and retreated back to Brooklyn Heights, where they then found themselves trapped between the British army and the river. It looked as though the war was already lost, but luckily, well, instead it. of attacking, the British decided... So no, I mean, when you say, you know, the old flank attack there, yep. I mean, you know, again, this year, because of technology, you know, people were well warned ahead of, you know, time. Whereas yep. here, you know, there's no drones, there's no um, satellite imagery, there's nothing. Is there? nothing. It's no, literally no, no. what you see is what you get. Your outposts, your lookouts, your forts, 
here they come, and then not seeing or you know well planned, I guess, to yeah. go a route where they weren't going to be spotted. But um, been used many times before, I believe. Um, yes. Yeah, the old flank attack. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, like I say, it's very interesting. And I mean, you just, you know, again, just the sheer, they said 25,000 from from Britain. I mean, imagine the amount of ships, people on board those ships mm. for months to get there. I mean, it's not like a now you get on a plane, you fly over. All the, no, yeah, all the long, supplies long that they needed. I mean, you know, it's, this is just massively drawn out going on and on and on, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I didn't, you know, quite realise the sheer scale of everything. And, and like I said, the, the amount of casualties, the amount of, yeah, amount of effort put in by both sides just to, um, uh, you know, carry this out. So, yeah, all crazy, right. isn't Learn, it? Learning quite a lot here, to be fair. All right, well, we haven't got long left, and uh, this okay. will be part one, so all right, let's keep going. ...to dig in for a siege, and then a thick fog set in, allowing Washington's army to escape across the river uh, unimpeded. The British continued to chase okay. and engage the Americans on Manhattan, the and the Americans suffered defeat after defeat after defeat. It was a disaster. Washington's leadership was called into question, as thousands of yeah. American POWs were left to rot as traitors. Washington's army fled through New Jersey, all the way down to Pennsylvania. Rarely wow. had an army been so badly beaten, yet survived to fight another day mm. there we go that was probably part just needed one. a bit of leadership a bit of a bit of, bit of better planning i think um but uh, all right part one very interesting oh, wow. yeah, very, absolutely uh very educational like the way he's done it you know some funny bits in there as well keep popping up so um all right yeah I wonder, good I wonder what the outcome is i wonder what the end is don't spoil it no spoilers out there oh, no spoilers no yeah no, no spoilers <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, thanks for joining us at Brit Pop Show. Make sure you subscribe, otherwise you're going to miss part two. Uh, you'll get notified in your subscription list when now. we do that. All right, um, just... Yeah. All right. Not you. I don't want to miss part two. Well, you don't want to miss part two. And before you go, if you could like the video, it would help us out um, at the channel because YouTube does like their algorithm does like recommended videos. The more people that uh, like videos, they think, oh yeah, these guys like that. So uh, we're recommended to more people, which is much appreciated. All right. And butts. They like and butts, butts as well. yeah, yeah. Just, just butt hit the like button if you like the butt. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and we're talking about the butt that came on screen, uh, not that yeah. one over there. All right. Until uh, tomorrow for another reaction, it's goodbye from me. Uh, goodbye from him. You Bye. fit right in with that hat, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a 20th century boy.